Charlie, it's been one week since I got Solar Panels and they're not printing any money. Printing money? You mean they haven't saved you any money on your energy bills yet? Uh, yes, let's absolutely, definitely say that's what I meant. Well, that's easy. There are multiple ways in which solar panels can cut your energy bills. But no ways in which they can print me cold, hard cash. What was that? Nothing! I'm Charlie. I'm Josh. And today we're going to run through all the different ways that solar panels can help you save money on your energy bills. Yes, we're going to tell you how you can import less electricity from the grid, how you can export your excess energy to the grid, and how much the average household can save with solar. And we are SunSave, we offer the UK's first solar subscription, which means you can switch to solar with no upfront costs and instead make fixed monthly payments. To learn more about that, skip ahead in the video or click the link in the video description. Let's go! Right Josh, let's get straight to the heart of the matter. How much can a UK home save, on average, each year with a solar or battery system? 86%. Wow. Yeah. That's based on a sample of SunSave systems that were installed across England and Wales in 2024. Explain this to me in terms of great British pounds. Well, I can absolutely do that. You can save hundreds of pounds per year, with some households saving even more than a thousand pounds per year. But where the hell do all these savings come from? There are two sources which you can boil down to import. Boiled sources, that's grim. <laughs> that is, yeah, that can be quite grim. Uh, you can boil it down to imports, which is the electricity that you get from the grid, and exports, which is the electricity that you sell to the grid. Okay, so how does solar help you save on imports? Uh, well, obviously your panels will be, hopefully, producing electricity, mm -hmm. which means that you'll need to buy less from the grid. Okay, so you're basically replacing energy that you would have bought from the grid with your own sun-based electricity. Exactly. It's known as self-consumption, and this won't necessarily be the case if you use a time-of-use import tariff, but we'll go into that later. Exciting. The other way you mentioned you could save money with solar was by exporting energy to the grid. How does that work? Well, it's all thanks to the Smart Export Guarantee. Uh, this government scheme was launched in 2020 to compel large energy suppliers to pay households for all the electricity that they send to the grid. But why would a home want to export its excess energy? Wouldn't it want to try and use everything itself? Maybe, although your solar panels will generate more electricity than you can use at various points, even with a battery, and especially in summer. OK, so can you make a lot of money by exporting excess energy to the grid? Hell yes, you can. You can make hundreds of pounds per year, and rates have gone up every year since the Smart Export Guarantee began, as companies try and attract new customers with increasingly appealing rates. If you want to learn more about the best import-export tariff combinations on the market right now, Josh has laboured over a very big article on the topic, and the link is down below. We made a vow to talk about time of use import tariffs, and by Jove, we're keeping it. So, what are they? Well, an import tariff is the rate you pay an energy supplier to buy electricity from them, from the grid. Sure, and what is a time of use import tariff? This is a rate that changes based on the time of day, so it'll typically have an off-peak rate overnight where it's cheaper, and a peak rate throughout the day where it's more expensive. That makes sense. Where did these come from? So they've emerged recently with the growth of EVs, so people with an EV can charge their car overnight cheaply, but lots of these tariffs don't actually require you to have an EV, which is why solar and battery systems can benefit. Wait, if nighttime electricity is cheaper, then will I have to become nocturnal? I'm not a Tasmanian devil. Stop worrying, Josh. You can automatically program your battery to import the cheap electricity overnight while you're asleep, and then you can use it throughout the day. The electricity produced by your panels will always be used first by your home. You can't change this with any system. But your battery, full of the off-peak grid electricity, will be useful at times when your panels aren't producing electricity. For example, in the depths of winter or in the evenings. And what happens to any excess electricity? It depends. You can either use it to top up your battery and then export the rest, or you can export basically all of it. We'll advise you on the best approach. OK, I've got my solar and battery system. I'm signed up to all the best import and export tariffs, but I want more. Josh, you're insatiable. Don't I know it. Are there any other ways that I can increase my solar savings and earnings? Yes, there are. And just like ABBA, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Horseman of the Apocalypse, there are four. Wow, what's number one? Clean your panels. God, you paint your panels for Halloween one time. When solar panels are dirty, they receive less daylight, and so they produce less electricity. And the less electricity they produce, the less I can use to cut my imports. But wait, what about our famously rainy weather? Won't that clean my panels? Yes, it will. Uh, solar panels have a hydrophobic coating, which makes them waterproof, and they're installed at an angle. And then so every time it rains in the UK, the rainwater, in theory, should wash off any of the dust and debris that's built up on the panels. 
but that doesn't mean you shouldn't clean your panels. In the UK, every two or three years, it's wise to give them a wash. Potentially more frequently though, if you live right by the sea, or right by a mine, or right by a farm, or right next to some woodland. That makes sense, but how am I meant to clean them? Am I meant to climb them like a spider monkey? No, please God, no, stay on the ground. Oh. You're meant to use a telescopic cleaning pole that you can use from the ground, and a non-abrasive sponge, and you should do it in a way that doesn't void any manufacturer warranty. Alternatively, pay for a professional to do it. All right, Josh, what's number two? Maintenance. Well, I'm low maintenance, personally. So are solar panels, for the most part, but it still pays to keep them in top, top shape. Because your solar panel output drops, so do your returns. Exactly. But it's not just the panels that you need to worry about. Some technical experts in the industry estimate that you'll need three call-outs over the space of 20 years, one each for your panels, battery and inverter. But how do you know when something with your system is wrong? And what do you do when something breaks? Great question. Well, with SunSafe Plus, you are covered by the SunSafe Guarantee, which gets you 24-7 monitoring, maintenance, downtime cover, replacement parts, and insurance. To learn more about the SunSafe Guarantee and why it matters, click the link down below. Charlie, three is the magic number, but how can it help me to increase my solar savings? By telling you to use more electricity. How does that work? Well, in the UK, with a solar panel system, you'll typically produce more electricity than you need, especially in the summer. Ah, and then you export that excess electricity to the grid? Yes, usually, but if you increase your consumption of electricity, you'll be able to use more of the electricity your panels produce. Ah, so if I use my excess electricity instead of exporting it, I'll be better off financially? In the majority of cases, yes. So how do households usually increase their electricity consumption? What do you think, Josh? Things like a heat pump, a hot tub, aircon, or by adding a member to your family? Wait, but won't I still be spending more money than I was before? Yes, good point. If you increase your consumption of electricity, you'll increase your percentage savings from solar. Solar will be making a bigger contribution. But overall, you'll still be spending more money because you need to import more electricity from the grid. Ah, what a roller coaster. Number four is staying up to date Skibbity. with the latest import and export tariffs. Oh. So there are dozens of export tariffs and time of use tariffs offered by lots of suppliers, but they tend to change every few months. How do I keep up with this ever-changing landscape? Lock in the best import-export tariff combination for your household and then stay abreast of any updates because boy are they going to come. I constantly? Constantly be aware? What am I, Charlie? Some sort of stay abreaster? Don't worry about it. At SunSafe, we keep an eye on the best combinations and publish them all in our very handy guide, which we mentioned earlier. The link is still down below. So those are all the lovely little ways that solar panels can save you money. They can't physically print money, but they can provide you with electricity that you can use to cut your imports and sell to the grid. And you can sign up to a time of use tariff to maximize your savings. To learn more, read our full guide to solar panel savings. The link is in the video description. Also in the video description, you can find a link to our advice hub, which is full of useful guides to stuff to do with solar. And you can also sign up for Sunset Plus, the UK's first solar subscription. And subscribe to our channel, where we will lavish upon you a waterfall of solar videos. Goodbye. <laughs>